Hi folks, my name is Mary Beth McLean and I'm a PhD candidate in the Aging and Health Program at Queen's University. In this presentation, I answer the question, what is the impact of disability and health on involuntary retirement? I am female, I'm in my 50s, I have medium length, wavy, dark brown hair and I wear brown glasses. I am wearing a mainly burgundy and gray shirt. This topic is important as more than one third of Canada's labor force is age 55 and older, and this proportion is expected to rise. Further, as the workforce is aging and disability rates rise with age, coupled with an increasing need and desire of older workers to continue working, many older workers face the possibility of being forced from the labor market. Moreover, with growing labor shortages in Canada, it is essential that employers consider ways of retaining older workers. In addition, older workers experiencing disability face ableism compounded by ageism. I use data from the Canadian Longitudinal Study on Aging to select a study sample of over 2,000 recent retirees. So that is those individuals retired between baseline and follow-up one of the survey. I then conducted descriptive and multivariable logistic regression analysis using 37 potential explanatory factors across seven domains. In terms of health and disability characteristics, more than one quarter of women and men reported they retired due to health, disability, or stress. A third of women and almost 20% of men had five or more chronic conditions prior to retirement. Other health and disability characteristics, such as self-rated uh, mental health, that is fair or poor, having limitations in activities of daily living, and health-related participation limitations were less common. In terms of voluntariness of retirement, respondents were asked, would you say your retirement was voluntary? That is, you retired when you wanted to. If they answered no, I considered them to have retired involuntarily. By this definition, more than one quarter perceived their retirement to be involuntary. This rate was similar between women and men. Among women, having worked in a manufacturing occupation, retiring due to organizational restructuring or due to health disability or stress, and reporting fair or poor health, prior to retirement resulted in greater odds of involuntary retirement. While retiring due to having wanted stop, to stop working, to pursue hobbies, or because it was financially possible resulted in lower odds. Having participated in non-work activities prior to retirement also resulted in lower odds. Among men, the story is slightly different. For men retiring due to a mandatory retirement policy, organizational restructuring, or due to health disability or stress resulted in greater odds of involuntary retirement. In addition, having participation limitations due to health prior to retirement, being younger than age 65, and having expectations of inadequate income for retirement resulted in greater odds. Having made preparations for retirement, retiring due to being eligible for a pension, as it was financially possible, or having wanted to stop working, resulted in lower odds of involuntary retirement. These findings suggest a focus on changing workplace practices and policies is needed to enable more workers experiencing poor health or disability to remain in the workforce longer. This could involve combating ageism as well as ableism, uh, putting in place evidence-based in interventions such as case management, multidisciplinary health care, and accommodations. Other predictive fa factors can inform uh, prevention efforts. For example, providing reemployment supports in the event of job loss, especially among men, supporting workers in preparations for retirement, including financial support and education. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to your comments and questions.